Hi, my name is Noma Langham Tlali Moses with HealthyBlackWoman.com, and this is my good friend Shaquita Graham with LovingTheBlackMan.com and Ateco.com. How are you doing today, Shaquita? I'm doing great, Noma. Nice to get to talk to you again. <laughs> Um, I actually wanted to um, discuss the story that you kind of brought up about um, the stories at financialjuneteenth.com, and the title is Asha Jermaine Dupree Killer Mike Support Black Owned Bank by Opening uh, Bank Accounts at This, um, at this Black Owned Bank. Um, and um, just to, I'm going to read an, a, a quote from Killer Mike. That he says, Killer Mike wanted people to know what, that it makes a difference when you when you bank black. In his words, we're banking small, banking local, banking black in capital letters. Small because they're here and they're personable. Local because you can get to your money quickly, and black because that's what we are. Um, and then uh, at the end of the um, article, the the blogger kind of also alludes to another story and he says um this draws a this is a shop uh i guess in contrast to the events of last month when a rapper black youngster whose real name is sam benson allegedly withdrew 200,000 of his 1.3 million from a wells fargo account in atlanta when he exited the bank the police threw him to the ground and cuffed him uh while he wasn't officially charged with banking while black benson said of the incident they come bum rushing me at the car put me on the ground putting guns to my head so i'm like what did i do a lady was like i'm not supposed to have two hundred thousand on me i'm like i'm a millionaire how can i not have two hundred thousand on me they couldn't believe i was young black handsome as hell and they couldn't believe i was getting two hundred thousand out i had my Rol rolex on and with all the diamonds in it all my rich stuff today so what's your reaction to that? Well, um, I, I was moved by the whole story, and I actually recorded a video about this on lovingtheblackman.com. I love this story because I basically came to the same conclusions as uh, Killer Mike, Jermaine Dupree, Usher, who were all involved in going to Citizens Trust Bank in Atlanta and opening a new account. I recently, not even a month ago, did the same thing because I think it's so important that in the black community we realize that we need to, number one, practice group, group economics, and number two, no one is going to treat us um, the way that we deserve to be treated but one another. So we should be doing business with one another. Um, we should be supporting black business and we should be doing whatever we can to be on the offensive and being proactive as opposed to being on the offensive, I mean, on the defensive and being constantly offended by others who don't give us the respect that we feel we, we deserve. So I love what they were doing and I did the same thing. Right. Um, and I thought it was interesting between the two stories that um, with this rapper, Black Youngster, um, I don't really know who he is, but um, I read the story when it, when it uh, broke, um, was the bank claim they didn't even know who he was. Um, and they they said, well, he doesn't even have an account here. And I wonder what, you know, there's so much confusion. Um, and that's because that should alert you that somebody doesn't really want nor need your business when they don't even know who you are and you have millions in your, in their, in their bank and they don't know who you are. And they're, they're saying, no, he doesn't even bank here. Um, so this, the story does say allegedly, um, but this was a real story that broke out that the police did come get him after he withdrew $200,000. Um, how true everything that was said in the story is, um, you know, we can't know because we're only reading the news reports, but I thought it was interesting. Um, and then the other end of the spectrum is, um, you see Usher and Jermaine Dupree and Killer Mike in a picture. I think they were in a picture with the mayor of Atlanta. So everybody knows who they are. Everybody knows that they're banking here. And of course, they're getting the love, the respect and the appreciation because they're putting their money where their mouth is. Um, and uh, the other thing that I wanted to bring up was um, it's interesting that they didn't um, 
they didn't just talk about it. They actually took concrete actions and went and opened bank accounts. And they talked about the fact that, you know, you don't have to put all your money in there, maybe just one account, or you could put all of it or whatever it is, but just do something tangible other than talk. Um, or, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, other than just talk about, let's support each other, let's support each other. Um, and they're actually doing it, and I thought that was very impressive. Um, it also brings to my mind, you know, the other story that was going on about um, the Oscars and how Will and Jada, um, you know, kind of started this whole talking of boycotting. Um, I don't want to get into too much about my views about the whole story, but I do think, again, it's a sharp contrast where you're talking and complaining about something um, after the fact, but you didn't actually do something tangible and say to people, this is what I'm doing. This is what I encourage you to do. Um, this is how you support black businesses or, you know, in their case, black movies or whatever it is. You become proactive so that when the time comes for you to say to people, let's boycott or this is not right, they'll stand right behind you because they saw you doing something um, tangible that they can say, yeah, I know she or he or they have always been um, supporting and, and working to have other people support black businesses. Don't you think? Absolutely. And um, the video that I did on this subject, I titled it Waking the Giants. Because I love to see black men, um, and I know people say this term is overused, but black kings, you know, throughout our, the history of this planet, they have done so much. And to see them being the giants that they are in this move, and I talk about um, some other black men who are doing similar things, like uh, former NBA player Devion George. He uh, partnered with an architect friend of his and created 47-unit um, um, apartment homes along with a grocery co-op in the community. So, yes, we need to group our finances together, and we need to create communities where we can be safe, and we need to follow and support our black men as they take the lead and things like this. And I just encourage everyone to Google a black bank you know, Google a list of black banks and find a black bank at your air, in your area. Because to piggyback on what you said about Wells Fargo, I saw an immediate difference when I went to Citizens Trust Bank. I mean, usually when you go in the bank, I mean, you know, we know the type of experiences we have when we patronize the businesses of other people. But when I went to Citizens Trust Bank, I automatically got a, a very welcoming um, just a peaceful feel, like I was in a place where I was accepted, where I was valued, where I was respected. And that's what we should expect, and that's what we should create and leave everything else alone, whether it's in the education system, whether it's in the business sector. Every institution that we can possibly withdraw from, I believe that the black community should, and we should create our own institutions. I, I totally agree. I think that... Um... I, and I think I've said it in as many videos as I can remember. Um, I, I, I grew tired of asking people to accept me and love me and include me and all this other stuff. And I think that if you have the opportunity to patronize your own, um, then you should. And if you have the opportunity and you don't, we really don't want to hear it when you whine about the bad treatment that you got. Because you neglected to, you know, for instance, open a bank account in your own community in a black owned bank and then you're crying about somebody mistreating you. Should they mistreat you? Absolutely not. OK, I'm not saying it's OK to go and be that somebody gets mistreated. Um, and I know there's going to be somebody who misinterprets what I said. Um, and says that's what I'm saying. But I'm not saying it's okay to be mistreated, and I think if you are mistreated, you should make a lot of noise about it. However, I think that if you have the opportunity um, to support your own, then you should, and um, then maybe you won't have as many issues with other people mistreating you because they don't feel like you don't belong. Um, but uh, I just want to close out our, our, our session by, again, letting our audience know that this is Shaquita Graham, of Ateco.com, which is a black business. And um, what Shaquita has done is she has um, started her own business, which she deliberately created a platform for black kids. And you can jump in and explain better than me if you want, Shaquita. Um, and what I love about Ateco.com, because I've been there, uh, I have kids of my own that I'm homeschooling, is you immediately, you're met by a little black boy when you arrive at the page. 
um, uh, the characters, the kids, and everything in the educational programs, uh, they look like us. And that's so refreshing. And that's one of the things that I, I, I love about what she's doing and I love about patronizing black businesses. Um, so again, Shaquita Graham with Ateco.com and LovingTheBlackMan.com, which is actually why she brought up the story. Um, she saw three black men doing something positive and she wanted us to talk about it. Um, and I'm Nomalangam Sally Moses with HealthyBlackWomen.com. And this has been a segment of Your Black Women, Will Black Women Keep It Real? Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you, Shaquita. <laughs>